Hi everybody. I have a book to share with you today called The Seven Silly Eaters. This book is written by Mary Ann Hoberman and illustrated by Marla Frazee. The Seven Silly Eaters. This one I chose just because we're talking about um, being silly in the month of April. Oh, this is a nice book. This is a brand new book. We have a copy at school that has been read many times. This is one that I ordered, I think sometime last year. And I found it, I went through my books the other day to see if there were any I wanted to read with you. Not so long ago, they say, a mother lived just like today. Mrs. Peters was her name. Her little boy was named the same. Now Peter was a perfect son in every way except for one. When Peter was just one year old, he did not like his milk served cold. He did not like his milk served hot. He liked it warm and he would not drink it if he was not sure it was the proper temperature. So, oh my goodness, look at this baby right there. And he's got his nose stuck up in the air. And he is choosing not to drink the milk unless it is warm, just warm. Can you imagine if you did that? If I were growing up and I had done that, my mom would have told me to drink it anyway. My guess is many of your moms and dads would tell you something similar. But Mrs. Peters did not mind. She was a mother sweet and kind. And when his milk spilled on the floor, she patiently prepared some more. She'd take the bottle from the shelf and chuckle softly to herself. What a silly sort of eater is my darling baby Peter. Can you see the pictures? When Peter had not yet turned to, another baby, sweet and new, was born, dear Lucy, small and fair, with big blue eyes and curly hair. But long before this child was grown, she had opinions of her own, of what she'd eat and what she'd not. She hated milk, both cold and hot, and warm was worst of all. Instead, whatever Lucy dear was fed, she bellowed for pink lemonade, not from a can, oh no, homemade. So now, what will Peter drink? Warm milk. And Lucy will only drink homemade lemonade, pink lemonade. But Mrs. Peters did not mind. She squeezed each lemon to its rind while mopping milk up from the floor and patiently prepared some more. She'd take the lemons from the shelf and giggle softly to herself. What a silly pair of eaters are Lucy Deer and Peter Peters. Sounds like a lot of work. Now Lucy grew and Peter too till he was three and she was two. And who was one? Why little Jack with eyes so brown and hair so black, a happy baby never cross. But all he'd eat was applesauce. Peeling apples by the pound, Mrs. Peters faintly frowned. She'd take the apples from the shelf and murmur weakly to herself. What a silly bunch of eaters are Lucy, Jack, and Peter, Peters. Oh my goodness, she is getting tired. Peter, Lucy, and young Jack had another brother, Mac. Mac was charming, round and plump, but if his oatmeal had a lump, Mac would dump it on the cat. Mrs. Peters didn't like that. Can you imagine? If your oatmeal was lumpy and you put it on the cat? But since she loved her children four, she'd strain the oatmeal two times more. She'd take it from the pantry shelf and mumble sadly to herself, what a foolish group of eaters are all my precious little Peters. What does Mrs. Peters need to do? I think she needs to encourage them to eat some different foods. Before another year was through, who came along? Why, Mary Lou. She was a darling, sweet and bright, and had a healthy appetite. That is, as long as she was fed soft and squishy homemade bread. Poor Mrs. Peters got no rest, but still she did her very best. She'd take the flour from the shelf and mutter feebly to herself, 
What a fussy bunch of eaters are my lovely little Peters. So they will eat warm milk, homemade pink lemonade, applesauce, oatmeal with no lumps, and homemade, soft and squishy homemade bread. And the house is a mess. Oh my goodness. A year rolled by, the children grew. They really are a splendid crew, sighed Mrs. Peters, pinning pins and diapering her brand new twins. There's two. Little sisters, quick and smart, impossible to tell apart, but Flo liked poached eggs, Fran, Fran liked fried. If she mixed them up, they cried. Tired to the very bone, Mrs. Peters groaned a groan. She'd take the eggs down from the shelf and whisper weakly to herself, what persnickety young eaters are all my seven little Peters. So much food and none of it the same. Now time went by as time will do, and as it passed, the children grew. The problem was that as they grew, their appetites kept growing too. But not their choice of what to eat, each child continued to repeat. They wanted what they'd had before. The trouble was, they wanted more. Okay, look at that picture. Mrs. Peters is looking frustrated. Creamy oatmeal pots of it, homemade bread and lots of it, peeling apples by the peck. Mrs. Peters was a wreck. She wiped her brow and heaved a sigh. Another year was passing by. In fact, she realized with sorrow her birthday would arrive tomorrow. Drearily, she shook her head and wearily went up to bed. Should that mama need to be working so hard? Look at how old those children are. Look how old they are. Do you think they're old enough to um, help make the food themselves? And keep things cleaned up? Do you guys know how to make some food by yourself? I know at school we do. She thought the children had forgot her special day, but they had not. At crack of dawn, they all began to carry out their secret plan. Mrs. Peters would be fed a birthday breakfast in her bed, a breakfast made of all the foods that kept them in such happy moods. So they're planning. They are old enough. So while their weary mother slept down the stairs, the children crept. And from the cupboards and the shelves, happily they helped themselves. Cheerfully they chopped and stirred, preparing what they each preferred. But despite the pains that they took, since nobody knew how to cook, to measure things or make them hot, the more they tried, the worse it got. So they're trying to make the foods that they like, but they don't know how to cook. First, Mac's oatmeal turned out lumpy, which made poor Mac grim and grumpy. In fact, the lumps got him so cross, he dumped them in Jack's applesauce. This bothered Jack so much, he threw it in the dough of Mary Lou, who tossed the mishmash that that made straight into Lucy's lemonade. And that put her in such a huff, she poured the icky sticky stuff into the double frying pan that held the eggs of Flo and Fran, who flung the hodgepodge on the spot into the milk and Peter's pot. So they're all trying. But then one got frustrated, so poured it here. Are they thinking before they act? They are not using self-control. Like our affirmation, stop, think, act. But when they saw what they had done, they wished they had never had begun. They'd hardly slept a wink that night, and still things hadn't turned out right. And even though they tried their best, it hadn't worked. They were depressed. They'd be in trouble, too, unless they found some place to hide the mess. The oven seemed the perfect spot. They all forgot it was still hot. They stuck the pot inside, and then they all went back to bed again. So they took that huge mess, and they put it in the oven. 
The clock struck six, but on they slept. Meanwhile, their mother softly stepped down to the kitchen. Smell the smell. What could it be? She could not tell. It smelled so good, she sniffed some more and opened up the oven door. She woke the children with her cries. They all come running in surprise. And in the kitchen, what they found was Mrs. Peters dancing round. And in the oven, no mistake, a pink and plump and perfect cake. It made a cake. And as their mother danced with glee, she cried, a birthday cake for me, a birthday cake still pop piping hot. To think I thought that you forgot. Now tell me, please, how did you make this pink and plump and perfect cake so high and light and smooth as silk? It's smooth and silk. It smelt silk from all my milk, said Peter. Lucy said it's pink from all my lemonade, I think. And from my apples, added Jack. My oatmeal made it soft, said Mac. My bread dough too, said Mary Lou, said Fran and Flo, and as, as for its size, it was our eggs that made it rise. Then everybody sniffed some more and danced around the kitchen floor. So when they tossed it all together, what did it make? And how does Mrs. Peters feel? So happy. They put the cake upon a dish and lit the candles. Make a wish, the children cried, before you blow. And Mrs. Peters did just so. And what is more, her wish came true as birthday wishes always do. And from that day to this tis said, the Peters family all is fed. A single simple meal, just one. A meal that's good for everyone, made from their secret recipe. Oh, a meal on which they all agree, made from their secret recipe. They all take turns in mixing it. They all take turns in fixing it. It's thick to beat and quick to bake. It's fine to eat and fun to make. Look at that. Because of that day, they're all working together and helping. It's Mrs. Peter's birthday cake. They cooperated in all of the foods they like to eat. Got put together in the cake. Do you like to try new foods? Trying new foods is a good thing to do. It helps you develop your taste buds. And then it's always more fun when you're preparing them on your own. We'll have another book tomorrow. Bye.